Well hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name's Joe and today we're going to be talking about the uh, vehicle speed system. Now ordinarily I don't do uh, fault finding videos and today's no different. Um, purely because I'm not a mind reader. So many of you write to me and say I've got this fault, how do I cure the fault? Well without actually seeing your ve uh, vehicle itself and taking all sorts of measurements and experience and looking there's just no way. All I can do is give you a whole list of possible things that may cause the fault and it may not be any of those things, especially if you're looking for something like a broken wire or a resistance in the cable or water ingress into a cable. Um, th these things are just endless. So all I can do is give you an idea of how a particular part of the system works and from there hopefully you can do your own diagnosis. So today's um, little instructional video is a very very basic look through how the vehicle speed is measured, transferred and recorded on the display in front of you. Now it's actually quite a basic system, in fact there's two different systems used on these cars. One is the old-fashioned mechanical system, the other one is the more modern um, electronic pulse system. So we'll look first of all what both systems have in common and then we'll move on from there to how they split off. So this is your transmission, also known as a transaxle or gearbox and possibly other things in your country. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. And this is where the recording of the speed starts from, right inside your transmission. Now if I open this up, you'll get a better idea of where it all starts from. Your output drive shaft will be here. And from that output shaft, we have this gear here. This spins as the output drive shaft spins. And then on this end, you can see it spinning here. Now this particular part of the system is common to all of the vehicles. To remove it, you just need your 10 millimeter socket. You undo the 10 millimeter bolt. And this will normally pull out. Now sometimes these are really tight. If it's really tight, do not try to get a screwdriver under there and lever it. I can guarantee you it will break. It's a very soft aluminium. It's very brittle. If it's jammed in there, get yourself a pair of mole grips. Grab hold of the neck here, twist it and work it up. Now this is a really common fault on these. This nylon uh, gear piece here will often wear away and slip on the output shaft giving irregular speed recordings. So you need to look here if you've got some, uh, some speed issues displayed on the, the gauge. This is not the only reason that this might happen. So don't uh, go and order the part and then think you're going to cure the problem. That may not be the problem. From then on, things change a little bit. Depending on which car you've got, whether it's the VR4, a 3000 GT, the GTO, single overhead cam, double overhead cam, um, they all use different things or may use different things. Even different years use different methods. So from here, the most basic version from this point is the old fashioned mechanical cable, which screws directly onto this thread and then through the center of that cable is a thin wire that rotates and that goes directly up to your speedo. Now this is actually the electronic version rather than a mechanical version. On the mechanical version you'll have a point here where the cable screws onto. As the inner wire spins it sends pulses to the display and records your speed accurately. Now if you have this mechanical type the most common faults are the nylon gear, the uh, mechanical cable itself snapped inside, or thirdly, the display itself being faulty. It could be all three. If I was you, I would start with the mechanical cable. It's the easiest thing to remove. Just pull the center piece out, check there's no brakes in it. If there's no brakes, you then move on to this, check the nylon wheel. If it's not the nylon wheel, 
then you're pretty much only left with your display itself. Now the display then sends a pulse after it's made electronic pulses inside the display. The pulse then goes down to your ECU where it's used for other things. So that's the most basic version of your speed recording equipment. Now we'll move on to the electronic version. This is the more common version. This produces electronic pulses. It screws straight onto the top there. So as this spins, it spins this part inside the middle. There's a little piece of electronics in here that creates electronic pulses. If we can get that on there. Now often these are screwed in really, really tight. So again, if you need to take this off, just get your mole grips on that nut there, loosen it off. You should be able to undo it with your fingers. That's sorted. These are a problem from time to time, not a huge problem, but they do go wrong. In order to measure these, you need electronic equipment. I'm not gonna be covering that type of fault diagnosis today. However, what you can also look for on here is when you remove the plug, which by the way, I'm afraid this one's broken. It's the only one I could find spare. When you remove the plug, never pull from the cables, always get it right at the base and you should be able to work it off. But there should be a retaining wire that runs around here. It's broken off on this one. If yours is not broken, you just need a little pick tool slip out the retaining wire, then this will pull off quite simply. Now, if you look inside here, you'll see another really common problem. This part of the gearbox is right down the back of the engine and it gets water splashed up onto it. Sometimes the water gets in here and causes corrosion and bad connections with the electronics. Electronics and water do not mix. They're going to give you problems. So if you look in there and you see any sign of any corrosion, that could well be the problem with correct pulses not getting through to where they need to be to. Uh, so check that very carefully before you go anymore. It could be you don't need to spend a single penny on finding faults um, or buying parts. Just clean it and it should all work fine again. Perhaps before you put it back together, if you have a water issue, just put a, a, some Vaseline or grease in there, light coating, just to stop any moisture. So from this point, your signals are gonna travel through the cable. And at some point through the cable, they're gonna get diverted. The pulses are gonna to go to your ECU for the ECU to do its work relating to speed. And then it's gonna carry on up to your display, where your display then measures the pulses converts the pulses into speed. It's a really, really simple system. So once again, all you need to look for on your faults, sensor, cable, display. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now you may need to know where this part is if you're not too familiar with this car and you haven't worked on one before. Hate to say it, this is right down the back of the engine, a really difficult place to get to, especially if you've got the turbo model. But don't worry, I did a separate video on removing all the hoses on the turbo and gaining access to things. On the non-turbo, all you need to do is remove the air filter and uh, the pipework go into your throttle body. Um, very simple to do. It's covered in countless videos that I've done because we always have to remove all that to get in here. Today I'm not doing all that. It's too much work. In order to gain access for videoing purposes, I've already removed the battery and battery tray as well. So now if the camera comes around here, I can point exactly to where you need to be looking for those parts. So they're going to be right down here where my finger's pointing. That is a plug plugging into the uh, electronic pulse sensor, um, pulse converter, comes up this wire here, and then you can follow it all the way through. So, I appreciate this is a really quick video. It's not supposed to turn you into a master mechanic. 
it's just to give you some pointers on where the faults are and I've purely decided to do this because so many people have uh, contacted me recently saying my speedo's not working properly how do I cure it I can't cure it for you by text I'm afraid but this video tells you all of the parts in the system tells you where they are and what you're looking for and hopefully by using this video you're going to be able to solve the fault yourself it's going to save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars in garage fees for them to diagnose it on your behalf all of these parts are still available as far as i can recall the displays can be repaired please don't throw away your display and go and buy another display they can be easily repaired the speed sensor can't be repaired i'm afraid that's a molded unit but hopefully it's not that that's at fault it may just be moisture um, with that said I think that covers it all I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll make use of it don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and if you haven't enjoyed it leave a comment saying what wasn't good for you um, how it could have been better for you and I'll remember those things in the future and try and cover them on future videos if you've enjoyed this video or any of my videos and you're looking for the forthcoming ones don't forget to subscribe Click on the bell and you'll get automatic updates of all the new videos as they come online. Presently, that's roughly one a week. So for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.